Hello, this session is related to the ADC interleaved mode. So I'm going to show you how to improve ADC something right. So today we will provide you tips and tricks on how to implement the ADC interleaved mode and this way increase equivalent something right. As a part of the session, I'm going to provide the ADC interleaved mode details from practical point of view, the dedicated mode of the ADC DMA data transfer, so-called MDMA using common data register. The example will be provided with based on the Nucleo STM32L476RG. So quite popular board and quite popular low power STM32L4 MCU, which is based on Cortex M4. So at the end of the session, I hope you will be in position to reuse the material and uh, implement the interleaved mode of the ADC on your side. So what is it, uh, ADC interleaved mode? It allows you to perform faster ADC conversion just by using two ADCs connected to the same input channel. So we have two ADCs, ADC1, uh, so-called master ADC, and ADC2, so-called slave ADC. So the first action to perform is to start the conversion of the master ADC. So then after sampling the stage of the master ADC and 0.5 ADC clock cycle and programmable delay which is given in the clock cycles the conversion of the ADC2 of the slave ADC starts automatically by hardware so the master ADC after this delay starts slave ADC and user can control three parameters. The sampling mode period, which is given in uh, clock cycles, uh, and you can select the particular SMP value from these numbers. You can find the, the SMP values in uh, uh, STM32L476 datasheet. Then user can configure the delay between conversion start of the slave ADC and also user can configure the resolution of the ADC. So it can be 6-bit, 8-bit, 10-bit or 12-bit. Today we will use 12-bit ADC resolution as the highest one. So once again, ADC master starts, then sampling stage, then 0.5 ADC clock cycle fixed delay and then programmable delay also given in clock cycle and then automatic by automatic I mean by hardware start of the ADC slave. We have two ADC active so we can consider two data registers data register for ADC one and data register for ADC2. The most efficient way to, in terms of performance, the handling of data, output data stream from the ADC, it is DMA, ADC DMA transfer. So <clears throat> the obvious solution is to use two separated DMA transfers, one from the uh, one channel dedicated to ADC1 and second channel dedicated to ADC2. But, thanks to the internal structure of the ADC peripheral on STM32L4 family, there is data register, so-called ADC CDR register. CDR states for Common Data Register. So, when ADC works in dual mode, it is possible to use this register, having the data from both ADCs in this register and this way save one DMA channel.
channel. So we can use common data register for DMA transfer. And this mode of the ADC DMA is so called ADC M DMA, multi DMA. And if we if would consider uh, the highest resolution, the 12 bits, that uh, CDR data placement is the following. The higher half world consists of slave ADC data register. The lower half world of the CDR consists of master ADC data. If you, we would select uh, 6 or 8 bits, the higher half world of the CDR is empty and the lower uh, half world of the CDR uh, consists two outputs uh, as well. But uh, in, the, in this case, in this use case, we have higher byte for the uh, slave ADC and lower byte for master ADC. But this is not our use case. Maybe it is a little bit better uh, visible on the diagram given, on the drawing given uh, in the reference manual. I mean the DMA transfer trigger. So let's try to find this within the reference manual. So here it is reference manual 0351 for the STM32L476 microcontroller. And here on the figure 133, you can see the DMA requests in interleaved mode when MDMA mode is active. So when we are using the common data register for data transfer. So we have end of conversion of master ADC. Then we have the following end of conversion of slave ADC. And then, following the end of conversion of slave ADC, we have DMA request only for ADC master. And following this request, the common data register data are transferred to the RAM memory. Let's analyze our particular application. So, as already discussed, we want to acquire the data using the highest ADC resolution, 12 bits. And we would like to use the highest possible or just a high sampling rate. So if uh, the high sampling rate is expected, it would be good to use fast ADC input fast channels. So uh, you can see in the datasheet that there are five ADC input fast channels connected to PC0, PC1, PC2, PC3 and PA. Zero. We can also uh, switch for a moment to the data sheet and see what is the difference between this is between fast and slow channel of the ADC. This is table 76 ADC characteristic. So let's consider the highest resolution here. So for the resolution 12 bits, we have maximum output data rate or maximum sampling data rate 5.5. 33 mega samples per second, while for slow channel, for the same resolution, we have more than 1 mega sample per second lower data rate, 4.21 mega samples per second. So let's use ADC input fast channel. It would be good to analyze also the conditions for the input circuit of the ADC as the signal source output resistance or the resistance which is seen from the input of ADC is important and also the capacitance, the input capacitance or the output capacitance of the signal source is also important. You can analyze the application node 2834 for the details. Let's switch to this application node for the moment and let's try to find the drawing showing the internal structure of the, the ADC. It will be simplified uh, structure, yes it is here, so it is on fi uh, figure 26, once again application node 2834 
This is the figure showing the simplified external and internal successive approximation ATC diagram. So, as you can see, there is an analog signal source and there is an output resistance. This source has an output or internal resistance, which is from the ADC point of view, it is seen as a RA in, so the input resistance, and there is a companion capacitance. Uh, which combines both the parasitic capacitance of the PCB, so this is C PCB, and the capacitance of the input pin of the MCU. Then, internally, because we have analog switch as a part of analog multipl input multiplexer of the ADC, there is a parasitic serial resistance of the analog switch, parasitic capacitance of the common pin uh, of the analog or, or the common clamp of the um, analog multiplexer and then we have also the sample hold capacitor so it is C ADC so we must consider especially the R A in and C A in impact to the accuracy of ADC conversion. All the details related to the, all the considerations uh, related to this point you can find within this application, no, just below the, this figure. The conclusion of the consideration on that point is that we can use the results of the simulation provided by ST and gathered or covered by very useful tool in order to estimate the uh, SAR ADC sampling rate. This tool can be provided following re your request on demand. And this is online tool. And as a result, following given RA in and CI in, uh, A in, you can get the suggested or recommended sampling mode period in ADC clock cycles. So maybe I will switch to this tool. As you can see, the user interface, it is web user interface, so you need to use the, any web browser in order to analyze your application. So the analyze is provided for the worst case in terms of temperature range, in terms of the power supply. I think quite robust approach. Then, first action is to select your target family of the microcontrollers. In our case, it will be STM32L4. You can configure the expected range of, of the ADC peripheral clock. So, <coughs> let's do it. We want to analyze the application following the highest possible data output data rate so we can expect that it is possible only for the maximum ADC clock frequency so let's set the minimum clock frequency of the ADC peripheral to let's say 40 MHz and keep the maximum value because according to the data sheet the maximum peripheral clock frequency of the ADC it is 80 MHz then we perform the analyze for both for both fast and slow channel we need to analyze the parameters for the highest resolution 12 bits uh, we have a uh, and, and uh, sorry and the maximum expected error it is one lsb then let's select this is the schematic you already have seen so taken from the application node the internal structure so the model for the simulation then uh, we need to select the resistance of our signal source or resistance which is seen from the input pin point of view of the microcontroller i mean the adc input pin of course so i selected 47 ohms and then you need to select the ca in so the external capacitance or the input capacitance from the ADC point of view. I selected 22 picofarads. Please remember this capacitance covers both 
parasitic capacitance of the PCB and also the input, the, the, the capacitance of the pin of the microcontroller. So then I can add plot. The curve in red color, it is for fast ADC input. In violet, it is the parameterization for the slow ADC input. So let's focus on the red color and let's focus on the highest possible value. So you can also see the numbers in the table on the right part of the screen here. And the, as you remember, the maximum clock frequency of the ADC peripheral it is 80 MHz. So here it is FADC, it is the maximum frequency. So let's try to find the fast Channel parameterization it is here, so the item number 81. So the recommended sampling mode period it is 6.5 clock cycles and as a result we will get 4.2 mega samples per second data rate. So we can also see this on the chart here. So FADC 80 MHz, output data rate 4.21, sampling mode period 6.5, clock cycles, ADC clock cycles, having in mind the input resistance of the ADC pin 47 ohms and capacitance of the input circuit 22 picofarads. Okay, so let's switch to the slides again. So we know the rec already the recommended sampling mode period, 6.5. Then we can select the number of samples to acquire, let's say 40. This is arbitrary decision. So the ADC clock frequency has been already discussed. We want to achieve the highest possible output data rate. So let's say select the highest possible clock. It is 80 MHz synchronous clock. And then let's select the delay of the trigger of slave ADC. Just to remind you, I'm talking about this delay. So having in mind the 12 bits resolution and the period for the conversion, 12.5 bits, uh, sorry, clock cycles, I selected three clock cycles as a delay between master and slave ADC start of conversion. So the single ADC full conversion takes sampling mode period plus SAR conversion, so 6.5 plus 12.5, it is 19 clock cycles. And having in mind trigger the slave ADC after delay, so here, so the slave ADC will be triggered after sampling hold stage, then 0.5 clock cycle and delay. So in our case it is 6.5 clock cycles plus 0.5 clock cycles and delay 3 clock cycles. So the slave ADC will be triggered after 10 clock cycles since the start of the master ADC conversion. Output data rate of single ADC, it will be 18 MHz divided by 19 clock cycles, what gives us 4.2 mega samples per second. It is also, just to remind you, this value you can find also using this tool. And you can see here, output data rate is 4.2 or 21. Regarding the let's say, user interface of our MCU application, we are going to acquire the data every one second. So every one second we will acquire 40 ADC samples. 
dual ATC samples. Then, after the end of conversion, we are going to print out the data using onboard Estelink Debugger Virtual COM port, and we are going to print the data in CSV text format in order to import the data in an easy way to Excel, for example. So, okay, then DMA transfer one shot mode, so stop of the DMA transfer when the uh, RAM buffer is full. We are uh, going to save one DMA channel, uh, having two ADC, ADCs active. So we will use ADC common data register and multi DMA mode, so MDMA mode. The printf output data stream stream will be redirected to UART and UART is connected to the onboard virtual COM port of the Estelink debugger. And here you can see in details the timings of our dual interleaved mode. So the first action, it is the sample hold stage of the master ADC, so 6.5 cycles, clock cycles. And then, of course, the ADC conversion of the, the SAR conversion starts of the master ADC, 12.5 cycles. But from the ADC point of view, ADC 2 point of view, a slave ADC, the conversion or the sampling hold stage starts after 0.5 clock cycle plus delay, which is 3 clock cycles. So, as a result, we have interleaved two conversions and single ADC sampling period it is 19 clock cycles. But if we consider the equivalent sampling data rate, so the dual ADC sampling period, it is 10 clock cycles here. Because here we have end of conversion of master ADC and then after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 clock cycles, we have end of conversion of slave ADC. So, we can evaluate the equivalent output data rate for dual interleaved mode. It is 80 MHz divided by 10 clock cycles, so it is 8 mega samples per second. So, we almost doubled the output data rate of single ADC, because the single ADC is 4.2, in dual mode we have 8 megasamples. So the next part, it is the practice. Uh, we can start our tool, IDE tool, and it will be STM32Cube IDE. 